I'm Henk van Graan. I'm the Stel's agricultural specialist. We looked at Nederberg and said, okay, what are we aiming for in terms of sustainability? What, where would we want to end eventually? And uh, we also saw all these material here uh, coming from, from the cellar as waste. Uh, the stems and pomace and everything and said, okay, well, why is it lying here and what can we do with it? So eventually part of waste management, we can also use it for our soils uh, and to make compost from it. With this, you get the, the retort. It's, uh, it's basically a drum with uh, the wood that we get from the cellar. So this is filled up with the wood. We will close the lid and then start the fire around this. And the heat from that will pressurize the wood and it will get rid of the sun gas inside. There's small holes, around about 12 holes at the bottom, not to get oxygen in, but to, to get the sun gas out of the drum so eventually, it's only the sun gas that's burning and, and not the wood. And so after about two to three hours, you'll get the biochar uh, in, the, in the drum uh, that we will use again with the compost, taking it to the soil. The process of paralysis, the heat will go from the top to the bottom and then uh, producing the biochar in the inner drum. Methane gas, uh, carbon monoxide, is pressurized in the wood. It's pushed out of the wood from the bottom holes outside and then actually the, the gas, the sun gas, is eventually burning, in not the wood. And where in the normal process with, uh, with, with what happens in, outside in nature, all that gases are going up. Methane gas, which is the biggest problem with, with climate change so that we can use to burn it up and it doesn't go into the air. This is the Contiki kiln that we use to produce the biochar. Uh, you get the cold air running on the side of the kiln and it's forming a vortex. So you will see the smoke. When it comes to the top, it will start rolling in. It's not going out of the kiln, it's rolling into the kiln again. So this is part of the process, not to get smoke all over. Everything is going back into the system. With the sun gas coming off, nothing will get out of the kiln. It will stay inside, burn out. As soon as you started to get white smoke because of oxygen, you put another load of wood in on and, and that will burn. And only the top wood will burn all the way and the bottom wood will become biochar because there's no oxygen. Then we will uh, soak it with water and just to prevent it from oxygen coming in, otherwise it will start lit again. So this is the product of six months uh, composting process. We started with stems and pomes from the vintage, mix it with uh, wood chips, which gives you very, uh, nice aeration in the compost. And we also add lime. And here you can see this is six months product, nice, fluffy. Uh, it smells like soil uh, and obviously has a lot of nutrients. Uh, bacteria and fungi in, in the system. Using it in a vineyard will be a benefit uh, to, to adding the nutrients um, to the soil with the current nutrients that, or, or the uh, bacteria and fungi that's in the soil. Most of our soils, I would say, has more bacteria than fungi and, we, and, and the ideal will be to have a 50-50 percentage of fungi and, and bacteria. What you see in, in the soil is our microbes. They are life in soil. And, and they are the reason because plants grow effectively. Without plants, you don't have soil 
And without soil, you don't have plants. And that is where the microbes uh, fit in. The importance of microbes is, is so enormous. I would wish that everyone would start with soil before planting something to e eventually give the plant the nutrients that it needs. With the photosynthesis process, uh, sugars are given off through the roots to the microbes. And for them, that is food. If the root gives them food, they give all the nutrients back to the plant. It must be a balanced system in the soil before eventually your plant can benefit from that. We actually farming with soil. Eventually we get grapes from it. Because biochar is so poor, uh, the advantage is that you can get all the nutrients, all the microbes, basically getting into the, into the biochar. The biochar is basically a skeleton of wood after, after burning. It's about 30 to 40 percent of water it can hold. So if you're in a dryland area or there's uh, times that there's no water, then the biochar will hold the water for nutrients, for the vines, for the roots, eventually to, to take you further. Basically, it's a sequestration of carbon. Taking carbon out of the air, put it back into the to earth, into the soil for many, many years to come. My first priority will be to, if I can do a ton on a day, that is where I want to be and, and eventually we'll get there. We know that Niederberg's always wanted to produce great wines, um, offering um, amazing intrinsics and value at all price points. But I think the critical thing for us is to realise we can't do it whilst we're not looking after the soil, um, the environment and the people that at the end of the day produce those products for us. Just to look at uh, the biochar and why we're using it, it's basically a, a con soil conditioner, eventually trying to save fertiliser cost with the compost that we also produce and the biochar into the soil uh, with planting. The advantage also is to, to save on water because the biochar is like a sponge. It will basically uh, hold the water in the, in the soil and eventually decrease water usage on the farm. The most important thing about biochar is that you have to charge it. Uh, you can't use it as is in the soil. So with the open pores, all the nutrients, all the uh, uh, microbes will basically fill the, the pores um, as, a, as a housing uh, for them. And uh, so, so you have to charge it with compost and then add it to the soil. The production of biochar is basically it's the best and the quickest way to sequester carbon. Increase water and holding capacity and put indigenous microbes with nutrients back into the soil. Everyone talks about sustainability in the industry, in the wine industry, but, but the, the farmers are battling. There's a lot of reasons for that. It's uh, dry land conditions, it's uh, no water or less rain that they had last year, and that eventually has a, a big influence on their crop. At Nederberg, we, we said we want to follow a holistic process of how we're going to get there economically wise, environmentally wise, and also for sustainable, a social sustainability. We just want a better functioning ecosystem. Uh, that is how it started. So everything that we do, we have to do better and measure it and do better again and measure again to eventually to have the benefit. And if I can do that, I will eventually uh, work with, uh, without chemicals 100%, but we're not there yet.